not really there yet but still a little bit closer uh, today we received another package and I know exactly what it is it's our last deck hardware from Rutgesen has been laying here for a while now and we haven't really been covered anything when we've been working when we were rebuilding the rudder so it looks very shitty now and uh, but wait a little bit and it will look a lot different I would say First of all, I want to replace my chain plates because they were more or less original and I thought, well, when I'm doing all the, uh, the work on the boat, I, I'd rather have new ones. Uh, I would say problem number one was probably to finding uh, the right material, especially here in Mexico. It's very hard to finding uh, 316, uh, which is preferable uh, for chain plates. Uh, it uh, rusts uh, less uh, if you compare it to like 304. Um, so I, I had the materials shipped in from the States and uh, they were all cut, in, cut to size, ordered from onlinemetals.com um, and when they uh, arrived here I had a machine shop uh, drilling all the holes and from there I have been working a lot on them. This is how it looks like uh, when I received the material. So it's a raw material and it's gonna turn into this Vera mirror. Uh, looking um, uh, finish but to do that it's a lot of steps so I think I'm going through 14 different steps I start with sanding with 40 grit sandpapers and uh, that probably takes at least 50% of the total time it's a very very small thin uh, surface and I need to get off it's like super small pitting but that's not the right word but that's how I describe it the next step is not uh, that hard but yeah, I have uh, one more chain plate to, to polish. Uh, totally I've done, I will have done 10 when this is done. So let's do the last one. So I have now gone over with, uh, uh, actually I started with 60 grit because I was out of 40 grit, so, but I really recommend go, uh, starting with 40. Uh, so I've done 60 grit and I have done 80 grit and um, 80 grit it was a pretty fast one so I mean what's important is if you're having black dots and you Ooh. and you um, continue with a, a f finer pa paper it will be hard getting uh, those black things off because you really need to cut uh, deep uh, to get them and what I also recommend is if you see here these are very narrow and um, I mean the drill isn't optimal to use but that's the thing I have and I didn't want to buy a, a polish machine. So when I'm, am I, if I'm uh, just uh, uh, sanding like this it will sand here and here but not really here. So here will be a line of those black uh, small pittings. Um, so what I need to do with this one I really need to dig in like this to get those out and that's the hardest part here. The optimal, um, if you see to the polishing, it would be to just polish a big sheet because uh, then you will not have so many edges uh, to worry about. Uh, so it's, uh, this is when you do it yourself, I mean, um, mechanic shops probably do differently but this works pretty good for me and um, yeah. Well, let's continue. We are at 120 now. So right now it starts to look very good. 
I've gone through all the papers up to 3000. So this is 3000 you see here. It's not perfect. It needs to be a little bit better. So let's go on with 5000. <laughs> This is after 5,000, sandpaper 5,000. It's not perfect, but I would say it's about 90% good. Still some small, small, small scratches. Um, it's not uh, super easy to see them when they're installed anyhow, but we'll see. Maybe I polish a little bit more, but I would say 90% good. I'm just frustrated. We took the sailor out because I wanted to inspect um, the seal, the diaphragm. And it looked pretty all right when I felt it everything. But then today I actually found cracks. You see here, it's a pretty deep one. It's another one there. But it's so damn expensive to replace this. If I'm gonna replace these two seals, $700 uh, with shipping, VAT. I just don't want to put any money into this, uh, to this end. I mean, I gave my word, diesel tank away last season because we thought we were going to do the electric conversion so this this season I have to um, have a made one uh, have a new one made and it's probably like five six hundred dollar we received a couple of quotes just for a, um, a 15 gallon one and uh, what else I mean I, I gave my muffler away last season as well because of the same reason I don't, don't I didn't thought I would need it but we changed our mind to keep the diesel so I had to buy a new Muffler this season, that was another maybe with shipping in VIT, maybe $250. Um, the exhaust outlet, I had to buy a new one there too, that's maybe $150. Um, I put in some effort uh, just to, yeah, to change all the hoses uh, on, the, on the engine, it's not a lot in the material, maybe 50-60 bucks and some other hoses that maybe that is about 50-60 bucks and what else is it? Um, oh, I mean, uh, hose clamps. It's probably like $150, $200 just for new hose clamps there. I need a new seal on the on the on the sail drive. Uh, it was pretty cheap still, but anyhow, yeah, I mean, pieces here and there, and those costs was not meant to be this season. So when when I found this, it was sort of like, yeah, it was just a little bit too much to find it now because I had. Um, Imagine to put in the sail drive without uh, replacing the but now I found this one so so how is the wood trims going the wood trim gulp he is I'm priming on my own today have a look here this is the selection of wood trims you can get them two centimeter wide or three centimeter wide in a different length and this is just for the ceiling yeah I think that's oh yeah Mm. 60 pieces or so. Today is not very good. I found some uh, paint that has started to flake here where the solar panels were, or the, this corrugated plastic. And it had started bubbling up all along here, just on one panel. I guess it might have been too hot or so. The reason I installed the, the corrugated plastic was to avoid that actually, to avoid the, the heat, so it got ventilated in, in, in the, in the uh, channels in the plastic. Obviously it didn't work as I thought it would. It's a pretty common thing that it gets very hot on the deck when you're having these kind of flexible panels. So I knew about that and I just tried to um, improve the installation. But this is how it looks right now so so yeah it's a lot more work now had to restore it we'll see if I put maybe non skidded on here or but yeah it's a lot of work and a couple of days ago we found the problem with them um, with a seal on the sail drive had a big crack two big cracks right now not in a very good uh, flow that's for sure <sighs> Mr. Mechanic has started Need to check everything on the sail drive so it's alright. Uh, I need to um, take everything out. So I'm gonna take the lower unit out. So by doing that, I first take out uh, the clutch and the gears here and the, and the shaft, the upper shaft. And I want to see so everything looks alright also. Here it moves. Here. It should be very tight there. 
and I mean everything you start replacing is just another cost and in the end you have just put down a lot of money into our old equipment so we'll see what I'm doing but uh, yeah, at least it's a start to check uh, the condition of everything shaft with the bearings out here's the upper part and um, so the diaphragm came out and we're waiting for a new one to arrive but this one we keep we're keeping this one in case of an emergency if the other one breaks maybe you hit a coral head or something else and we can probably um, beach the boat somewhere and just replace this um, with the old one so it's it's a nice idea to have a, to keep the old one it still still works so this is the lower the lower unit and what I'm what I just d have done is I just uh, took out this part sits on the on the lower part here I just unscrewed it here it was a little bit weird position and uh, I would just I need to check the uh, the two seals here so it's two seals one that seals uh, the water coming in and one that seals uh, the oil to stay inside one I just got out it looks like this and uh, this will look all right by just look at it a little bit fast I haven't looked at it so much but this one here come and look at this one this must like never ever have been replaced and I'm surprised because it's you see it's just like rusty and a lot of like oops corrosion inside and uh, yes this stuck like maybe they hard. come together no it's too separate they should be so mm -hmm, Jesus. Well, I guess after like an hour, two hours of work maybe, trying to get this outer seal out. I think I'm on my way now. You see here? Looks pretty shitty. I tried everything. I tried to heat it up and I tried it with... Um, yeah. So now, yeah, I hope it's gonna be here now. It's gonna be... feel good if I get it out. Oh my gosh. Do you have it? Nice oil seal. Yeah, not too bad inside. I was expecting much worse after what I saw here. So yeah, I need a clean and I probably need to sand it with maybe a 2000 or 5000 paper. But yeah, I was afraid I was going to buy a new one of these, but no, things, things are right. So yeah, thumbs up. First coat of anti fouling on the sail drive. Feels pretty close to launching when you're starting with anti fouling. A lot of stainless. So that, that's all our tanks for the mast. So what we have done now is uh, we have had it lying in oxalic acid just to take away if there was any kind of uh, rust or so on it. Uh, but the most important is uh, the step I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna put it in a bath of nitric acid and what nitric acid does it preserves um, it's a preservation for the stainless and we need one more liter the tanks are swimming so it's gonna preserve the stainless steel and make it uh, less prone to rust all right there's no shortcuts to shininess if you want something to shine, then you have to really work hard. Um, so yesterday I was doing the, um, uh, the finishing washers for the chain plates. And today I'm doing the bolts. So the bolts looks like this. A little, little bit like industrial or machine look. And on a boat, you want it to be shiny. Well, at least I want it to be shiny, so I need to put down some more work, and um, yeah, I'm gonna show you how it how it looks. So I did one yesterday actually, just to test it, see how much work it was. It wasn't too bad actually, but I have to go through all the sandpapers anyway. So, but I start with grinding off the the first layer, that one is that's very hard to get off that I did on the on the chain plates. Um, but anyhow, this is how it looks after polishing up to 5,000 and it goes pretty quickly anyhow to 
sand it, so I'm not too bothered about it. It was much more work with the, the finishing washers I did yesterday, so. Yeah, so you see the chain plates here is installed. This is, is the one on the AMA, uh, but it's pretty ugly in here. Um, but that's because we haven't been so careful. Uh, it's because this will fit on top. And I haven't just uh, installed those yet, mainly because I didn't have a drill long enough and I didn't drill the holes before I installed the chain plates. But now I received a longer drill, so because otherwise it was hitting uh, the edges here. But all the chain plates will have uh, these kind of covers uh, on top, just to make them a little bit more uh, surface area for the, um, for the sealant we're putting in. I thought I was done with all this. Yeah. Fairing and sanding. Um, I think we painted both AMAs and uh, 20 centimeter waterline, maybe, I don't know, nine months ago. Just to protect everything because it was open to fiberglass and it was the rainy season. So I knew this was coming, that I was going to sand down all it again and apply a couple of more coats of epoxy primer and then down to falling. Bad, I mean, I thought it was a pretty quick job. But then I started to, to feel with the handle a little bit and I thought it was, would need a little bit more fairing. And now I've been fairing and sanding for four days, I think. And I hope, hopefully today I'm all done and I start applying the primer. And so a couple of coats today and a couple of coats tomorrow, and hopefully the to falling as well. So let's continue. Two coats on today of the gray, 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 gray primer. So that was at least a little bit of success. And tomorrow's Sunday, I think I have a day off. Uh, but uh, Monday, one more coat of primer and then the antifouling. It's such a good feeling now when I have, when I am able to install the things. Look here, my nice sliding door. I think this one is not perfect. No, very good. So we got the chain plates up. So then I could we could put on the wood the panel here. Because then I could install my things. Fridges up. Just gonna do this here. Sliding doors. And look this one. I'm pretty happy about this one. Before it was just fiberglass woven. Wait, wait. Now it's a nice for my piece here. Oh, a little door. Yes. Looks pretty alright. I'm putting the, these lids on, small hinges. And all the wood trims for the ceiling is up. The position is on, but they are not painted yet. Yeah, that's about it. This is the best progress this week. Looks so nice. Ah, this one. Yeah, that's all from the interior. My friend Radar. He's all installed on the mast. It feels good. Had a little bit of trouble. Uh, before the, um, uh, the cable were running on the outside, and I didn't really like that. So I decided to drill that hole you just saw. And uh, went pretty carefully, but just inside here you also have a plastic tube. That's usually you're putting a plastic tube in the mass just so the, um, the cables shouldn't uh, uh, make a lot of noise on the inside of the mast. But just when I drill it through, I managed to uh, touch one cable, so the insulation came off. So I decided to pull it out and change the cable. But it sounded pretty easy, but we had to take all the cables out because they were all taped together. And that was a big... Not a big project, but still took a day uh, to do everything. And then we took a uh, took a new uh, antenna cable for the VHF as well uh, to install that one. Otherwise, on the mast, it's more or less ready to um, to go up. All the tanks are installed, like you see here. These are installed as well. Lights are installed. I have a couple of more blocks on the boom to install. But otherwise, these are installed. The exit plates, and um, yeah. I think we're gonna um, put the mast up within a week or so. I, I was hoping to put it on uh, this week, but uh, some issues uh, made me to start some other projects instead. Anyhow, the mast is close. What are 
he up to? He's screaming. Taking my anger out of on this rope, this expensive rope. Why do you want to harm it? I want this ship to come in here now. Let me see. Never come any further? When I left it, I had four. One, two. Yeah, 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 you have. Ah. This is the hardest task so far in the whole refit. <laughs> That's crazy. You thought it was the easiest. Or like nothing is hard for you in the beginning. <laughs> Watch the <laughs> watch out so you don't take the tree with you. They have to pay the marina new tree. <laughs> Alright, so it's not impossible. Somebody I don't know. It feels like impossible right now. It takes me half an hour to do that compared to this uh, project. It's not really finished, you haven't uh... Yeah, yeah, it has to be sewn and yeah, it starts to yeah, rip up. No, it was just a test one. It's not that it's impossible to do the whipping. I know I can do the whipping, so. Okay, I'll leave you here.